Mary to Katie K here coming to you with the challenge of the month. So you've seen the title, you know this is a challenge and based off the title I'm immediately thinking that that's going to be a challenge for me because it is. So my basis for this challenge to myself and you know for you guys is we really don't do that. You know, think about any wrong, think about any hurt or pain. Um, as a woman, we are very talented in having something happen to us in 1999 on a cold winter morning. I don't know. And then in 2013, we see the person and we are arguing with them. And then we say, and just like you did in 1999 on that cold winter morning, you know, like we just don't even ever, do we really let it go? We say, I forgive you, but we've never really let it go. We are still mad from 1999 and a cold winter morning. I don't know. You know, it's very descriptive. Okay. But the whole point is we have, it is just really time to let it go. I can recall a time, um, Mary to Katie K circa 2000. Okay. Very attitudinous, very tell like it is because I had seen a lot go on and I was not going to be the person that had it happen to them. So when I got grown, graduated from high school and turned 18, I decided I'd spend time just putting everybody in their place. And that was not the best way for me to handle anything. So then we'll switch up to Mary to Katie K circa 2007. I'm married. Um, I'm a wife now. I am getting ready to be a mother. I'm pregnant. And um, I'm still trying to learn the fine balance in being a young adult, being a young woman, being grown, you know, being a wife and all those things I did not know how to do and never really thought that I should have paid attention to learn how to do them. So um, one of the main things I remember hearing from um, older women, um, my mother and a few women that I trust, you know, I have a very small list of women that I know I can confide in and trust with anything and they'll keep it in confidence. I keep my list short for a reason. Um, so I would always hear them talking about letting stuff go. And I'm like, let it go. You can't let it go. Let it go. Why would I let it go? You know, you have to remind them that you did this to me and it hurt my feelings. And you're going to remember that you did this to me every single time you do something similar. So if you ate the last of the Captain Crunch, when I bring a box of Special K in the house, don't touch my Special K because remember how you ate the last of Captain Crunch. I'm going to remind you of this. Why am I still mad? Let it go. So that just lesson not only pertains to marriage because I was really good about doing that with Mr. KDK and not only with marriage, but with our church members, our family members, our friends. You know, how many times do we say we forgive these people that we see regularly and we don't? Now, it's a bit different if you forgive somebody and you don't see them in 13 years. Even then, you need to let it go. That doesn't mean you weren't hurt. That doesn't make your feelings about the situation invalid at all. Your feelings are valid. Your emotions are valid. But your reaction is what makes you different. Okay, your reaction is what makes you different. And I'm stressing that because I am, you know, a Christian and I see so many different types, you know, and that irritates me where I am now because I remember being that way. But even in my worst form of me as a Christian, I was never proud of it. People these days are proud of being a cursing Christian. They're proud of being the Christian who puts everybody in their place. Even when I was doing that, I was never proud to be that person. I always knew it was something that I shouldn't be doing. And now that I'm older and more mature and wiser, I understand it's because I was not appropriately displaying the fruit of the Spirit of God. Who knows what the fruit of the Spirit is? Raise your hand. We've had a, um, a challenge, a monthly challenge that included knowing the fruit of the Spirit. Do you know? Tell me. Yeah. Comment down below if you remember the challenge and if you remember what the fruit of the Spirit of God is. Yes, that's how you know somebody has the Spirit of God. And you have to grow up in that. And so in doing all of that, part of it is going to take letting go. Because we all know that if you don't forgive and you don't let go, then your prayers are just going up, hitting the ceiling and coming right back down. Who wants to hear you? 
Why is God going to hear you when you can't even hear me and my apology? And even if I don't apologize to you for wronging you, you still need to forgive and you still need to let go. Because that forgiveness is not for the person who's offended you. If I've offended you, that forgiveness is not honestly for me. It's for you. Because if you don't forgive, your prayers are being hindered. If you don't forgive, then you're not dis properly displaying the fruit because you have no self-control. You're still angry and uptight. You're still holding on to that. You're still, you know, if this person comes around and your stomach curls all up, you know, you're still upset. That has happened to me several times. I can even go back to one time I was so furious. I would walk into the place. I would walk into this place and my stomach would turn up in knots. No one could say anything to me. Even good or bad, like hello, nobody could glance in my direction. I just knew they were talking about me, and I was angry at everybody. And it's a good old sister, well, I can say her name, it's a good old sister Jan to tell me, let it go. And guess what I said when she said that? You know, why I have to let it go? Why? I can't be mad at sister Jan for saying that. Because it's the truth. Now I was mad that she said it. I wasn't mad because it wasn't true. Because it was was not the truth. I was mad because who's you know how dare you tell me the truth? Do I look like I want to hear the truth right now? But I needed it. I needed that truth. All right, guys. So the whole point of it is that I understand you're hurt. I understand you've been wronged. I understand that the person or persons who did this to you they deserve for you to think of your worst thoughts and exact revenge upon them but what does that really give you what does it give you who cares if revenge is best served cold or hot or with rice or whatever you know it, what does it give you what is the real satisfaction that you have in that you know what there is no satisfaction in that there is no satisfaction in that. The satisfaction comes when I act appropriately and accordingly and I don't embarrass my husband by popping off for no reason. The, my satisfaction comes when something happens in front of my son and I handle myself like I know a woman should and he's none the wiser. That's my satisfaction. My satisfaction comes from knowing that when I pray, it goes straight up and it doesn't load around and linger, hit the ceiling and bounce off, go up in a wisp of smoke. It goes straight to God, who my servant, who, I'm, who I love, who is in charge of my life and truly the head of my life, who has changed me and took all of this. I've said it before. He took all of that and he turns it into this. And sometimes I sit in awe and I try to figure out how it happened. How it happened because had I kept going in the direction that I was going in, so angry, so angry, so hurt, and just everybody, you know, they made me mad, they made me mad, but people are just going to do that. I honestly don't believe that everyone wakes up with the intention to anger you and hurt you and hold you back. Not everyone. Some people might. Not everyone's going to be happy when you're successful. Not everyone's going to be happy that you're okay with you. Not everyone's going to be happy about the passion you may have for something. Not everyone's going to be supportive of that. But, so what? If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're acting appropriately, you're reacting accordingly, there's nothing else you can do. There's nothing else you can do. There's no reason to hold the grudge. There's no reason to be angered by it. Let it go. Let it go. It was hard for me to hear from Sister Jan. She didn't tell me just once. She told me a lot of times. A lot of times. But I appreciate that. That's why she's that's why she's in my that's why she's in my in my little circle. Because I need people like that who love me enough to tell me the truth. Let it go. I dare not have you stress out anything going on with marriage to Katie K because they pay no bills. It don't help us do anything. So why am I going to let their reaction, their actions, their attitude, their personal vendetta, their comments, concerns, stop me from doing what I know I'm supposed to be doing, put a pause in my progress, take me backwards? Never. Never. That's why I really appreciate having my husband. He is the best pastor I've ever had. My father is the best pastor I've ever had, but now that my husband's my covering, he is the best pastor I've ever had. He knows me well. And the word that he gives me, I know comes from God because I don't always want to hear everything he has to say. 
everything that he says he does not do to pacify me because I'm not married to a weak-willed Ahab. I'm married to a king. And he pastors his home the way that God fathers his children. You're not always going to like what you hear. You're not always going to be, ears are going to be tickled. That's honestly not really going to happen. He's going to read you and he's going to read you well. He's going to read you your rights. And you're going to have to deal with that. And I'm thankful for him. I have a phenomenal husband who loves me enough to tell me to take it down. To tell me you're too good to react that way. Don't get frustrated. Don't come home and feel like a punk because you used to be a fighter. And that was another one of my things. You know, I used to be a fighter. So I would react appropriately. And then I come home and feel like a punk because I was like, man, I should have said this, this, and this. Then you know, you find yourself going over the story in your head. And then you wake up in the middle of the night. You're like, oh, I should have said that. Why are you thinking about it? Who cares what you should have said? Because it's over. Let it go. Let it go. No holding grudges. No more unforgiveness. I am so sincere. Let it go. You know, I've said and I post those words at the end of every challenge. No more denial 2013. We're going to deal with it. Who wants to go through this year the same as every other year? Let's try something different. Let's actually try letting it go. And it's hard. And again, I know you were wrong. I will say it again. Your feelings are valid. But... When it gets to the point where it's hindering your progress and your process, it's not important anymore. If it's causing you not to be a positive example in front of your children, or honestly your siblings, or just period, to walk around the way you should walk around. If it's taking you joy, it's not worth it. Let it go. Don't give the devil any more room in your head to fill your mind up with the way that story should have happened, the way the conversation should have went. Who cares? Let it go. Let it go. So let's practice. We're going to take a deep breath. And we're going to let it go. Seriously, let it go.